So hey everyone, good day to all. Today in this video, I am going to talk about two important MCQs from the medicine topic, guys. So please do not miss these topics. So okay, what you know, you what you need to do is that please stay with me to get the your two mocks in your pocket. Okay, na. So guys, first of all, I would like to discuss about the nagma and hagma. I think you heard, you need, I think you know about this one. So you just uh, need to re remember which is hagma and which is nagma. Okay, na. Always there is one MCQs in the examination, guys. So metabolic metabolic acidosis divided into two types. So having they are showing nagma is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and another is on the hagma. So this is the high anion gap metabolic acidosis. They will, they will just simply ask which are the which are the following showing high anion gap metabolic acidosis they will do these options okay na? so i am going to make it very very simple guys okay so just remember you remember nagma nagma see nagma is rad nagma is rand sorry is a rad nagma nagma is a female she is a rad okay na? nagma is very rad so nagma means normal anion gap Normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. These are the examples of the nagma. Example RAD. R means renal tubular acidosis. A means Addison's disease. A means estradiolamide and also aldosterone. And D for digestive tracts having the GIT and the diarrhea related. Remember this RAD. Okay, na? So let me discuss it one more time. There is a Renal tuber disease, Edison's disease, estrogelomide, aldosterone, diarrhea and GIT related problems. All are coming into the nagma that is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. See, apart from this, apart from this, whatever they will ask, these are all are belongs to the hagma. That is the high anion gap metabolic acidosis. See, there are four options in the questions. See, if they ask about the which of the following is a is not a hagma, is not a hagma, they will give three options and one from here. See, apart from these, all are hagma. So, please remember only one. Are you okay? Done, done, done. So, next coming to the guys, very, very important topic is that uh, diabetes. I think you guys have heard about the diabetes type 1 and type 2. Type 1 happens due to the complete complete destruction of the beta cells due to complete destruction of the beta cells so in the type 1 diabetes guys you have to give the you have to give the insulins okay coming to the type 2 diabetes type 2 diabetes is due to due to what resistance of the resistance of the insulin resistance of the insulin beta cell is there producing the insulin but there is something resistance okay now so guys for this one just for the according to for the exam point and point of view you have to remember there are some tests you have to remember some values that is the fbs fasting blood sugar random blood sugar hemoglobin a1c hb1 hba1c test so what is the normal value for the fbs it is the normal is less than 100 less than 100 that is the normal diabetes if if the value is more than 126, then, then, then we can say that patient is diabetic. For the pre-diabetic, it is the between 100 to 125. 100 to 125 is the pre-diabetic. Are we getting? Okay, now. So, if you want to see the current glucose sugar level, if you want to see the current sugar level, sugar control, then you have to do the FBS. FBS is very, very important. FBS is very, very important. ABS is very better. ABS is ABS is better than RBS. If you want to confirm the if the patient is diabetic or not, you have to perform the ABS because ABS give the exact value. ABS always done in the done in the done in the morning. You have to be fast. That's why you have to do the, do in the morning time. So ABS is more more better than the RBS. Next, coming to the RBA, that is the random blood sugar. See, random blood sugar, the normal value is the less than 140. Less than 140. If the normal value is less than 140, then it is the, then it is the normal. Diabetic means, it is, if it is more than 200, it is more than 200, that is the diabetic. 
प्री डायबेटिक प्री डायबेटिक इज बिटवीन द 140 टू 199 इज द प्री डायबेटिक अबाउट टू बी डायबेटिक इट इज प्री डायबेटिक मींस इट इज इन द गुड कंट्रोल ओके प्री डायबेटिक मींस इट इज अ गुड कंट्रोल सो गाइस फॉर द आरबीएस यू हैव टू डू द GTT glucose tolerance test what is glucose tolerance test first you have to give the patient 75 grams of the this is 75 grams of the glucose this is a question already in the exam how much how much glucose it is a 75 grams of the glucose you have to give to the patient so after 2 hours after 2 hours you have to do the rbs okay actually we are doing like this but nowadays they are directly doing the rbs without giving anything so you have to give this one how much 75 grams of the glucose after 2 hours you have to do the rbs next coming to the hba 1c test the normal is value is the 5.6 less than 5.6 if the if the value is more than 6.5 that is said to be diabetic more than 6.5 see panja chakka panja chakka is normal but chakka panja is diabetic see 5 6 is normal but 6 5 is not normal 5 6 normal 6 5 6 5 is diabetic what is pre diabetic is the 5.7 to 6.4 is the pre diabetic remember this one so guys for the long term see for the long term sugar control it will tell it will tell about the past 2 to 3 months glucose levels also for the long term for the long term sugar control you have to do the hba1c for the current sugar control you have to do the fbs it is hba1c it is good it is best for the diagnosis also we can treat the patient as for the severity according to the value of the hba1c and the cut off percentage used for the for the determination determining controlled diabetes is the 7% this is also a question. This is also a question. Cut-off percentage usual for determining control of diabetes is the 7% only. So these are the important questions. And one, th one thing is that in the diabetic type 1 also, in the young adults, there is another type 1, it is the Modi type of diabetes. Modi. Okay. There is another type, it is a Modi modified onset of diabetes, something is there. Okay. See, Modi type. In one of the exam, they will just ask what is the most common type of MODI? It is the type 3. Type 3. It is a autosomal diabetic dominant. See MODI, MODI, see MODI. He is the MODI, MODI Sarkar. MODI, this is the third time. He is the PM of India, third time. This is the type 3 is the most common. Okay, so he is always dominant. So it is a autosomal dominant. Okay, the most common gene defect is the HNF alpha defect. Just remember, Modi type 3 is the most common. Autosomal dominant, more than enough. Now, coming to the DKA, guys, diabetes ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis. It is the most common complication of the diabetes type 1. Diabetes, diabetic, diabetes type 1 and 2. See, see, actually, DKA. Diabetic ketoacidosis happens in the most in the D, in the type 1 diabetes. It can also happen in the if the patient is having the uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. So, which is the which is the triggering factor for the DK? The patient ha is having infections and also stress. Infections, inflammations. If they having the patient having the intoxication, then also it triggers the DKA. What are the what are the symptoms or the Nausea, vomiting, symptoms are the symptoms are the nausea, nausea, vomiting, polyuria, there are also the hypo hypovolemic shock, it means the patient is dehydrated and the patient having the weight loss. And the ABG it shows the metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis that can trigger the trigger the breathing that is called as rapid and deep breathing or hyperventilation <laughs> that is called as Kussmaul's breathing called as Kussmaul breathing due to more increase due to more number of ketones in the urine due to more number of ketones in the urine 
it it urine it shows shows sweety sweet fruity smell sweet sp sp sweet fruity smell of the urine due to deposition of the acetone acetone so for this type of patient this is the decay is very very emergency type guys so first of all you have to do the abg you have to do the abg first of all you have to do the abg everything out of ph bicarbonates everything how to do and also you have to check to check for the electrolytes mainly potassium and sodium usually in the dk there is always low sodium and high high potassium after that you have to give the give high amount of fluid replacement 1 to 2 to 2 liter of the ns saline after that you are insulin that is regular insulin iv regular insulin this is the only type of uh, this is the only insulin that is given via iv that is regular in one of the exam they ask what is the what is the dose it is a 0.1 unit kg per hour for one bolus you have to give 0.1 unit hope this is very clear guys thank you very much if you have any more doubts please let me know